you've learned about potential dividers where we change value of R to change the potential difference in the circuit. Okay. And right now, we are going to look at potential meters. Okay. So the whole point about changing the potential is actually to change the output. Okay. When we change the R, we change the V, we send that V to a light, the light can become brighter, dimmer, or whatever output device that we choose. But changing the value of R can also be done by a device called a potential meter. So normally in the actual circuit, potential meters look like this. Okay. There's a knot that you can turn. And then uh, this is where you contact. This is where you connect to the circuit, this two. Number three is ground. Okay. Meaning it's the extra connection that we connect to the ground in case anything wrong happened to our circuit, fuse or whatever. The extra charges doesn't burn everything. Okay. But when you study this in the lab, your potential meter does not look like this. It looks more like a wire on a ruler. Ding. Okay. So if you've done some labs before, you will know it looks like this. Here is a close up for you if you want to look at it. So normally what we'll do is we will screw in a wire. Okay along here or here and then you can actually read carefully whether you are using 10 cm of the wire or 20 cm of the wire all right so uh, to represent this in a circuit drawing okay what i will do is i will first um draw out the wire and look for a potential meter right the wire is your main main character okay so a potential meter circuit will consist of a wire Okay, so here is a uniform wire with known length. So you know the length and hopefully you also know the resistance. Okay, of course, if it's an exam question, they could ask you out of the problem solving method to find the value of R. But most of the time in experiment, we definitely know a lot about the wire because we're going to use the wire to measure something else. All right. So to set up this wire, I am now going to connect the wire to a circuit. Okay. So let's say this circuit is a potential difference of D. Okay. I'm going to connect it to the wire this way. So think about how this is different than our regular potential divider circuit. For our potential divider circuit, instead of having a wire like this, we would have a bunch of resistors, right? A bunch of resistors, okay? But right now, we have a fixed wire. Teacher, can change the potential, meh? Can. What I need to do is actually to connect one end of the wire here, and maybe here is my movable contact. So you see you have connection one and connection two. This is connection one, this is connection two. Okay, so in the lab, what we'll do is we will take a movable contact. So this one is movable contact. Uh, sometimes we call it a jockey. Okay, and we can move it along the wire. And why do we do so? Well, if let's say I have a movable contact and I connect this along this uh length here, let's say this length here is x, I know that resistance is proportional to the length. So I'm taking the potential. Or in other words, uh, if you've done enough past year question, let's say now I draw the graph of resistance, resistance of the wire against the length of the wire. So let's say the wire length is L. Okay. So right now, here, uh, okay, now let's put some numbers. Let's say this one is 12 volt. Okay. And right now, this is length L. And maybe this one is CM. So I'm just going to put this one as X in CM. Okay. Two graphs I want to draw. The first one I want to draw is resistance. So if I put the movable contact at position 1, here is position 1, right? This, move, this uh, wire will have no resistance. So your graph is going to go, go and look like this. Okay. Because R is proportional to L. Maybe like this. Okay. Because R is equal to rho L over A. So if it's uniform wire, uniform wire, then R is proportional to L. Number one. 
Okay. But what about the potential difference? So you have a, hopefully a clear enough understanding to know that when you come out of the battery, you are pumped full of energy. So we have 12 volt. Ah, 12 volt, 12 volt, 12 volt, all the way until here, 12 volt. Ta-da! We meet the resistor, the energy user. The resistor is going to go like, come, come, give me that sweet, sweet potential. So this is zero volt. We know that at the end of the wire, we will use up all of the zero volt. I mean, all of the 12 volts, it's going to be zero, okay? So then we're going to start with 12. Let's say this is the V graph, okay? So what I'll do is I'll start with 12 here, and then it will decrease uniformly until zero at L, okay? So if, let's say, I want, I have a length X here, let's say this point here is point where the contact is, point number two, I can actually tell that the potential difference or the potential drop here to here just based by just based on measuring the length okay let's let's use a common example let's say now this length is one meter okay so number two since v is proportional to r but r is proportional to l i can say v is proportional to l meaning to say right now if one meter let's say this uh meter rule is one the the wire is the known length here is one meter okay it's 12 volt and let's say this x here is i don't know 25 cm so then 0 0.25 meter which is point x will be divided by four use ratio ratio is your best friend so this is three volt meaning the drop here when you draw when you travel from here to here is minus three volt. So this one is minus three volt, and the potential at this point here is nine volt. So you can see I can instead of reading V or putting it into a voltmeter, because whenever we put a voltmeter or whenever we connect more stuff, it actually makes it more unreliable. So what we do is we have a movable contact where we can adjust. So instead instead of having the potential drop constant drop constant my graph will now look like at the power supply i increase and then throughout the wire i decrease that way so i have a continuous way to control the potential difference this is the strength of the potential meter okay uh, so i'll just write this down here the role of the potential meter is to allow the potential difference basically it's a continuous potential divider so allow the potential difference to change in a continuous manner okay so uh in real life circuit of course we're not going to Look, your computer has a bunch of potential meters. It's like one of the basic of electronic circuits. So if you, you put you put a one meter one meter ruler inside your computer, and you don't nobody wants to buy that kind of computer. Okay? So yeah, we have this really, really small. Smaller than this one also got. So we turn the knob to change the length, and when we change the length, we change the potential. Okay? So here are some basic application of the potential meter. Okay, so I'm going to run you through a very short application. But before that, just to remember that when we look at this one, um, when I say this 3 volt, right, it means that if I connect a voltmeter here, this voltmeter is going to show me 3. Not 9, uh, but 12 minus 9, drop of 3. Okay, so this is the same setup. Okay, let's assume everything is the same. This is 12 volt. Okay, so what normally will connect here between the connection one and two is anything okay can be anything all right don't worry first let's try hmm okay let's connect a battery like this and then you may be thinking uh teacher you connect battery for what ah? well we know that the potential difference across the point one and two parallel so it is the same as the potential difference from here to here which is three or in other words if you, if you feel a bit happier you can tell yourself this is 12 by the time you reach here this is nine again i'm assuming that here to here is 0 0.25 meter okay 
So potential difference one, two is actually equivalent to three volt. Okay, so we can adjust the position of the jockey. Okay, and let's say for example, right, if I connect a voltmeter or an ammeter here, maybe I'll connect a sensitive ammeter. So right now, normally what we'll do is we will adjust the length or the value of x. So adjust the position of x until the ammeter reading is zero. Okay, and why do we want that? Okay, so if the ammeter reading is zero, which is something that we can clearly tell, we call this uh, other terms that we use is like null deflection or zero point or balance point. These are all different terms they use for ammeter reading zero. La. Balance length x. Okay, so but what that means is there is no current flowing in the emitter. Though, okay, so if there's no current flowing in the emitter, let's say I mark out these two points here as being point A and point B. I can say the potential difference at B or the potential at B must be the same as V2. Because if you think about your emitter, this is your emitter like this, okay? And then on top here, you have point B. Below here, you have 2. Sorry, you can't see. Ah, below here, you have 2. So VB is equal to 2. Then current cannot flow, okay? So if VB is equal to V2 and current doesn't flow, then a few things I can talk about. Number one, um, for example, if VB and V2 is the same, and also, since VA is equal to V1, because, you know, they are kind of connected to, they, are both, they both have direct connection to the battery. This one and this one. Direct connection. So I can say that the potential difference of AB is the same as the potential difference of terminal 1 and 2. Now, between 1 and 2, I can put anything, anything I want, I can put there, just anything, okay? So if I replace it with a battery or I could put uh, anything that I want, as long as I adjust, so the condition here is I get to adjust the length until the emitter is zero. If the emitter is zero, ta-da, the potential difference at this point will be the same as the potential difference at this point. Okay, second one, since this two is connected directly to the power supply, VA is equal to V1. That means if I take this minus this, since A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2, numbers, okay? So 12 and 12, this is 9, and this one is also 9. Because it's the same, so this is 12 volt. And then here will also be 9 volt. Okay, so B is equal to 2, A is equal to 1. Then the potential difference is the same. Then we can start answering question from this one. Right, so this is the main takeaway. Whenever they tell you balance length, or zero reading or the null method this is the idea that we are looking for find the point where the potential difference is the same we will start here and either normally you will either use ratio using the potential divider ratio or v equal ir okay so we're gonna do some examples involving this but this is the main theory okay so instead of potential divider and potential meter are just the same thing potential divider has a fixed resistance. So you must drop a certain amount. So it's like a staircase, okay? This one is like a slide. You have a continuously variable amount, meaning you can change it to whatever you want to measure whatever you need, okay? So when I can do this, right, this kind of like, this allows me to measure the EMF of the battery. So 
V12 is actually equal to the EMF of the battery. Of course, between 1, 2, I can connect anything. If I connect a light bulb, so I'm just going to add this here. If I connect a lamp across point 1 and 2, okay, I can say as X increases, so as I connect X, the potential difference 1, 2 increase. So if I increase the length, I increase 1, 2, then the lamp is brighter. There are infinitely possible ways to connect the circuit. So it's not so much as memorizing all the circuit, but understanding the idea and the principle behind the potential divider and potential meter. Spreading out the potential along one meter. All right, I'll see you in the example video. Take care now. Try some questions. Try already, you know. Go and try. Don't just watch me and Miss Ellie do. You have to level up. Bye.